Guys, we are on page eight of Act Five, Scene Three, and Juliet has awoken. Um, seen Paris's body and Romeo's body, and Friar Lawrence heard the watchman coming, and Friar Lawrence left her alone. I can forgive Friar Lawrence for a lot, but I cannot forgive him for leaving her alone. Um. Okay, so Juliet, on page 8, has a solilo soliloquy, and she's talking to Romeo, and she says, What's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand. Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. O oh, churl, drunk all, and left no friendly drop to help me after. So Juliet calls Romeo a churl, um, selfish because he didn't leave any poison for her to follow him. Um, and then she kisses his lips. Um, Haply some poison yet, yet doth hang on them to make me die with a restorative. And then she says, thy lips are warm. And his lips are warm because he's only been dead for a matter of minutes. Like, it just is so close. And then um, the Watchman and Paris's page come in, so like everything's happened very quickly. And um, Juliet hears them, and she says, Then I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. He there rest and let me die. And so because there wasn't enough poison, she takes Romeo's dagger and she stabs herself with it. And she dies. And the page and the watchman, of course, are just moments too late. And um, the watchmen are trying to, like, investigate what's happened because they see blood on the ground. Um, and they, the chief watchmen send the other watchmen to um, figure out what's going on and look for witnesses or suspects. And the watchman sees all the dead bodies and he sends another watchman um, like go collect everybody um, and then the second watchman comes in and he's found Balthazar um, and then the third watchman comes in and he's found Friar Lawrence and Friar Lawrence has with him the tombs needed or the tools excuse me the tools needed to enter the tomb which makes him a suspect um, Okay, and then the prince has come, and Capulet, so Juliet's dad, and Lady Capulet, Juliet's mom, have come. Um, and Lady Capulet says at the bottom of page 10, Oh, the people in the street cry Romeo, some Juliet, and some Paris, and all run with open outcry toward our monument. So what is happening? Um, okay, so the chief watchman explains, and he says, Sovereign. Um, Prince, here lies the county Paris slain, and Romeo dead, and Juliet dead before, warm and new killed. They thought Juliet was dead, and she's been dead for two days, but her body is warm, and she now has a stab wound, so, like, she's been revived, and yet she's still dead. Okay, um, and then... Capulet says on page 10, O oh heavens, O oh wife, look how our daughter bleeds. This dagger hath mistaken, for lo, his house is empty on the back of Montague and is missheathed in my daughter's bosom. And Lady Capulet says, O oh me, the sight of death is as a bell that warns my old age to a sepulcher. So Capulet um, notices that the sword or the dagger that is in Juliet's breast is Romeo's. And then here comes Montague, and um, <coughs> the prince says, Come, Montague, for thou art early up to see thy son and heir now early down. Montague says, Alas, alas, my liege, my wife is dead tonight. Grief of my son's exile has stopped her breath. What further woe conspires against mine age? So we have another death on our hands. Um, in scene three and Montague's wife Juliet's mom has died of a broken heart because of Romeo's banishment so um, Romeo's mom is dead as well
Okay, and then Montague says, to Romeo's body, this gets me a little beclempt. Oh, thou untaught, what matters, manners is in this, to press before thy father to a grave. So, he's his son, he's not supposed to die before him. Okay, so the prince says, um, let's calm ourselves and till we can clear these ambiguities and know their spring, their head, their true descent, and then I will be general of the woes and lead you even to death. So um, the prince says, let's figure out what's going on first. And Friar Lawrence um, says, he is the greatest of suspicion, able to do least, yet most suspected as the time and place doth make against me of this direful murder. And here I stand, both to impeach and purge, myself condemned and myself excused. So Friar Lawrence says, I look guilty, and I am guilty, but I'm not guilty of what you think I am. And he's going to ask for pardon or, or um, like forgiveness for his part in what has happened. Um, so Friar Lawrence says, I'll tell you the truth, um, and bas basically he lays out what his part in is. He says, um, Romeo and Juliet were married, and I married them, and their stolen marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished ha the new-made bridegroom from the city. For whom and not for Tybalt, Juliet pined. So um, the day of their marriage was the day of Tybalt's death. Romeo was banished. And Juliet was mourning Romeo, not Tybalt. And you, to remove that siege of grief from her, betrothed and would have married her perforce to County Paris. Then she comes to me and with wild looks bid me devise some mean to rid her of the second marriage, or in my cell there she would kill herself. Then gave I her, so tutored in my art, a sleeping potion, which she took, which so took effect as I intended, for it wrought on her the form of death. So um, Juliet was desperate to avoid the marriage to Paris, so the friar gave her the sleeping potion. Um, and I'm on page 12 now. Meantime I writ to Romeo that he should hither come as this dire night to help to take her from her borrowed grave, being the time the potion's force should cease. But he which bore my letter, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight returned my letter back. Then all alone, at the prefixed hour of her waking, came I to take her from her kindred's vault, meaning to keep her closely at my cell, till I conveniently could send Romeo. But when I came some minute ere the time of her awakening, here untimely lay the noble Paris and true Romeo dead. She wakes, and I entreated her, come forth, and bear this work of heaven with patience. But then a noise did scare me from the tomb, and she, too desperate, would not go with me. But, as it seems, did violence on herself. All this I know, and to the marriage her nurse is privy. And if aught in this miscarried by my fault, let my old life be sacrificed some hour before his time unto the rigor of severest law. So if you feel this is my fault, then put me to death. This is Friar Lawrence. Um, and then the prince interviews Balthazar. Um, Balthazar to tells the prince that Balthazar told Romeo that Juliet was dead. Um, and Romeo came here from Mantua. And he produces the letter that Romeo had written to his father. Um, Balthazar says, Romeo threatened to kill me if I stayed. And um, the prince on page 13 takes the letter. And then he asks the page, um, who is Paris's page, to explain his role in all this. And page said that um, Paris came with flowers to strew on Juliet's grave. Um, and then Romeo came to open the tomb, and Paris drew his sword, and they were fighting, and then p the page ran away to get the watchman. And the prince reads the letter, and he says that um, Romeo's letter confirms what Balthazar and the friar have said, um, and... Romeo said in the letter he bought poison from a poor apothecary, came to the vault to die with Juliet. Um, 
And then he says, where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joys, your children, with love. And I, for winking at your discords too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. So Paris, or excuse me, the prince says he's also to blame and his punishment is because he didn't do enough to stop the fight um, between the two families. And the prince says his punishment is the death of two of his kinsmen who are Montague and Paris. That's my dog going outside. Um, Capulet offers his hand in peace to Montague. Um, as his daughter's dowry because his daughter is gone. And then Montague says he will raise her statue in pure gold that whilst Verona by that name is known shall there shall be no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. So Montague is going to um, erect a statue in Juliet's honor in gold in the city of Verona, so everyone will know what a good person she was. And Capulet says, um, Capulet will make a statue of Romeo by Juliet, and um, they will be buried together in the Capulet tomb. And Capulet says that Romeo and Juliet were poor sacrifices to her enmity. So they died because of our feud. And then on page 14, the prince closes the play. He says, A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The, sorrow, the sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. So um, the last question that I have for you based upon the acts is like the prince says some will be pardoned and some will be punished. So if you were the prince, who would be pardoned and who would be punished? Um, lots of people have responsibility or some share in the responsibility for what happened to Romeo and Juliet. So who would you blame? Um, everyone is culpable blaming, blameable in some way. Um, Balthazar didn't stop Romeo, and the friar knew the whole thing, but did it in the best of intentions. The apothecary sold the poison to Romeo. Um, the prince didn't do enough to stop the fighting. The prince chose to banish Romeo. Like, Paris wouldn't have died if Romeo hadn't been banished, like if Romeo had been put to death. Um, and then you have the death of Juliet's, or excuse me, Romeo's mom. Like, who's to blame for her death? Is it the prince again for the banishment? Would it have been different if he'd been executed instead? Um, does it all lay, lay on Romeo because Romeo was the one who chose to seek revenge over the death of Mercutio, instead of just letting the law take care of it? Is it ultimately Tybalt's fault for killing Mercutio? Like, there's so many different factors that were involved. So who would you choose to punish and who would you choose to blame, uh, to excuse or pardon? Okay, um, I am going to close up the video lessons for now. You probably won't have another one. But you're welcome to email me or FaceTime me anytime. Um, I'm going to come up with two different cumulative activities for you. Um, and after you finish the scenes and you've read all of the play, then those two cumulative activities will be the last activities for you for the rest of the semester. So um, you guys take care as always. I really believe that I will see you in August. I think we're going to be at school in August. And so um, you guys take care, do as much of the work as you can. And um, as you work on your cumulative activities, make sure that you let me know if you need some help. So bye guys.